look what I am holding, this prized desert rose. What's up, it's me, Devin, your favorite urban gardener, AKA Plant Vibes, and I'm here with one of the most spectacular plants that you can grow. In my opinion, the desert rose is just one of the most perfect plants, especially when you can induce it to flower, which is not always easy. They can be uh, challenging at times to get to flower, but when you do, the show is unlike any plant you've ever seen before. Now the desert rose, this is a plant that comes from areas around the world like uh, Socotra or Tanzania out off of the Arabian Peninsula where it's like it's this in, intense desert environment where it's like hot beaming sun for 365 days out of the year. It rains like negative 13 inches um, and it's just like the most adverse conditions you could imagine and that's where these come from. So when you're thinking about growing this as a house plant um, or indoor outdoor plant as I like to call it, there's a few things that you need to remember and to do in order to make these plants do what you want, which is make them grow and flower. I was gonna say to make them happy, but it's really an interesting plant that like, things that we would normally think make other plants happy does not make this plant happy. All of those house plants that we want to give our TLC to, you know, give them just the right amount of water on a normal schedule, you know, just so they don't like freak out or get wilted. This isn't that plant. This is a plant that needs that hard love. If you want this baby to flourish, give it the hard love like, uh, you know, like we had to do for my brother when he was finishing high school. Give him the hard love. Um, and that's how you get these plants to flower. So what, I, what do I mean by the hard love? This is a plant that it really likes to get stressed out, very much so. We all hate getting stressed out, but this guy loves getting stressed out. And so what that means for you guys is in the summer months, from like May till September, maybe October, depending on where you live, put this outside in the hot, full sunlight. That's what you need to do. Give it full hot sun in the summertime with the occasional watering, maybe once every 10 days, maybe, uh, that's probably good, once every 10 days. And when you stress it out like that, that will actually encourage it to um, produce flower buds that will then produce flowers. So when you're looking at this plant, the first thing that you notice is this really dope trunk, uh, also known as a caudex, they call it a caudex. And out in the wild, you know, it grows into these trees that are like maybe 12, 15 feet tall, but for us, as an indoor outdoor plant, you gotta keep it in a container because these have to be inside in the winter time, unless you live in like uh, SoCal or uh, Southern Florida, those areas where you can grow all sorts of fun stuff. But for the rest of us, we keep it in a container. Generally, we like shallow containers like this because when they have that shallow container, it's like, okay, where are the roots gonna go? The roots, they're not gonna keep going and going and going like you know if they were in the ground, but rather the grow, the energy that the plant has, it kind of, tells it to go inwards and when that energy is sent inwards that's what makes this get, guy get nice and fat and swollen like he's been you know lifting weights for 10 years as his biceps are totally swole and um, so that's the first thing the second thing is the second thing that you'll notice about this plant is, is that it looks like a bonsai and this is a plant that is a natural bonsai. You don't have to do any particular specific training to get it to have this sort of beautiful uh, branching structure. That is its natural growth habit. That's why we call it a natural bonsai. And um, then the third thing is, is that if you are really trying to induce these to flower, like I was saying, you gotta give it that hot sun and you have to really restrict its water. Um, but when you start to see the flower buds, that means you've almost got it to, you've almost stressed it out just enough, but you gotta keep stressing it out a little bit further. You know, some of us, we need that extra stress in order to really shine. This is what, what, this, is what this plant needs. In order to make it shine, you have to push its limits. So when they have the flower buds, you really have to be um, conscientious about not watering it because if you water it, you'll make it feel too happy and too at ease and then it's just kind of gonna like sink back into the couch rather than get up and do something good with itself. And, um, in that, and what I mean by that is do something good with itself, flower. So when you see buds on the plant, you really have to be restrictive of the amount of water in order to make those buds open up into flowers. So <clears throat> long story short, this is a plant that can live for decades, you know, out in the wild, hundreds of years. Um, for most of us, you know, decades is probably long enough. 
and um, it is truly one of the most sculptural, structural, architectural, something old plant that you can grow. So that's the Desert Rose, and um, I'm Devin, your favorite urban gardener, um, and uh, also known as Plant Vibe. So, later.